This is a uh, real piece of uh, architecture, a building, by Charles and Ray Eames. Uh, it's from the 1964-1965 New York World's Fair, and it was part of the uh, IBM Pavilion. And it has a uh, both uh, intellectual and sentimental interest for me, um, because I remember this uh, uh, IBM Pavilion, and I remember this kiosk very well. My father was Deputy General Commissioner of the New York World's Fair, and as a result of that, my mother and I had VIP passes to the fair. And with VIP passes, we got free Cokes, and we got to the head of the line and went inside of every pavilion. Now, I was 11 years old at the time, and I will tell you that I only remember one pavilion of all the pavilions we went to, and it was this, the, uh, the Eames uh, IBM Pavilion. And it was very satisfying to me in doing uh, my Eames uh, scholarship to discover that it wasn't uh, a uh, fluke that I remember this vividly. Uh, for example, when uh, Esquire magazine in uh, October of 1963 were allowed to preview uh, the fair, um, their critic assailed every single exhibition except for one. And uh, they, Esquire did this great feature story called The Thinking Man and Exhibit. So I guess I was a thinking man even at 11. And uh, the headline says, a notable exception to the jaundiced report proceeding. And as the journalist at Esquire wrote, quote, and there will be at least one genuinely distinguished exhibit at the fair and he's referring to the IBM Pavilion, a 54,000 square foot display dominated by an enormous 90 foot high egg nesting in a sprawling grove of trees. And uh, here from a 1964 uh, issue of uh, uh, Architectural Forum, you see some of the, uh, uh, the making of uh, uh, schematics. Um, uh, contemporary university scholarship these days uh, focuses on uh, uh, these aspects of the Eames work uh, that this uh, kiosk represents, which is what one scholar, uh, Beatrice Colomina, refers to as multimedia architecture. Um, this is a new book by a German scholar, Sandra Schramke, and uh, the cover features a, a photograph taken inside the IBM pavilion and down here you can see uh, one of the five kiosks. This one here, which J.F. Chen has arranged for us to, uh, to see in and, and this Getty Pacific Standard Time exhibition, is apparently the only uh, one remaining. Um, uh, this book, uh, the scholar Sandra Schramke writes about Eames multimedia architecture from 1959 to 1965. This uh, uh, kiosk was part of their last big multimedia presentation. When you uh, got to the fair, um, I'm not sure if you can see this, uh, and you, you arrived at the IBM Pavilion, there was this uh, wonderful uh, nest of uh, trees. On top of the trees, this enormous egg, which was a movie theater. And then underneath the trees were these five kiosks, which were um, uh, each had their own uh, mini theater inside, and you learned a great deal about one subject, which is thinking. Now, um, it's kind of fun for me to see this because uh, uh, I, as if it was yesterday, I remember being, getting on the, what uh, Charles and Ray Eames called the people wall. Uh, you got on at the level of the kiosks. You were taken up inside the egg and you watched a 22 screen uh, movie. And it was only a 10 minute movie, but one of the, the, the Eames ideas was, well, we're gonna give you a lot in uh, 10 minutes. And by using 22 screens, they gave you a full experience as rich as a, a two hour Hollywood movie um, um, in effect. Now, there's a variety of things that make this uh, uh, consistent with other Eames designs. And because it's on display in this exhibition, I had a chance to examine it closely, and the public can too. And one thing that tells you it's an Eames design is this is in original condition. This was outdoors in New York City in Flushing Meadows in 1964 and 1965, and it hasn't been restored. It's made, it was made indestructible by the Eameses. They used some kind of uh, 
enamel on metal. They used solid wood poles. The, uh, the metal flags, instead of using cloth, they used metal, but they gave it that wonderful furled effect. The brass finish is intact, the enamel paint. Um, like Eames chairs, their Eames architecture was uh, uh, indestructible. The bright colors uh, are welcoming and, and signify the fun of the learning experience at the, uh, at the fair. Charles and Ray Eames always felt that if learning was more fun, people would learn more. And um, it's a fun looking, uh, uh, looking pavilion. There was a, uh, uh, there's an oral history with Charles Eames and uh, he said that he had a 19th century upbringing and he and Ray were pretty close in age and I think that that's a statement that's true of both of them. Um, in some of the uh, architecture magazines, they talk about the 19th century influences on this uh, design. It has some other uh, Eames characteristics. They didn't conceal the connections. You can see the screws, you can see the brass washers. Um, this meant for uh, a simpler construction. They didn't invest any money in trying to hide how it was put together. And J.F. Chen has a very talented staff, and I understand that they were able to assemble this from the parts in under four hours. And uh, it's, it's a marvel to behold. Some of the metal has a finish on it, but the finish hasn't worn off. And because the poles are solid wood, uh, they're still in great shape. 